welcome to another episode of Trader Babes. We have got a really good one for you today. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow at Trader Babes on Twitter so you can get notifications of new episode releases and your chance to submit questions for our guests to answer on the show. My name is Erica. I am joined by Aria and she had a killer trade today. Will you tell us about it? Sure thing. I uh, had a home run at 700% on my spy call. I got it yesterday. Um, an hour before uh, market closes. And the reason I got it was, like I said, I always use my daily chart and I, there was a clear um, bull flag breakout on the daily chart and um, a hammer on the 20 moving average. And to me, that's always a signal to buy. Given the market conditions right now, though with the whole choppiness of the market, I did go with a small position but I'll take that at 700%. Oh my gosh. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> and I think it's amazing that your, um, that your really good trade today was in options because our guest trades pennies and options. How cool is that? That he does both very volatile and he he's able to find a balance between the two. So uh, uh, you, you have to always learn. So I'm excited and I like to see um, what he has to say. I know I'm going to get my notebook out. Cause you know, I've been trying to learn options for a while. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to be taking notes along with the rest of everyone watching. Awesome. Uh, we are going to bring in and say hello to knots bull trade finder. Hi. Hello. How, are, How you are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Hi. Uh, welcome. We were just talking about Aria's amazing trade that she had today. She had overnighted spy calls and got like 700%. Yeah, no, I saw that this morning. Uh, I, I know uh, someone who did uh, SPX calls uh, just around like, yeah, basically 1000%. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh, wow. I mean, you know, the craziest ones that I've seen so far, the GME <laughs> that went like 15,000% oh. the next yeah. day. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And it just speaks of how, what a great opportunity we have. If you know technicals and you have a certain strategy, <laughs> this is really uh, one of the best places to be the market. But what also makes great. it so dangerous, right? That, that is also true. As well as it could be good, it could be bad. <laughs> and that's where strategy comes, you know, into it. Yeah. Once you start having a strategy, you're not going to have those big losses and hopefully the big gains. Well, at least it, they're not all going to go right. But at least if you're smart about it, you cut Correct. them quick and your winners outweigh your losers. Correct. Staying consistent with position size and everything is uh, definitely one way to limit your risk and at least you know help you on the profit side too yeah Absolutely. well said uh, this is very important a lot of traders suffer with that mm -hmm. specific aspect true i agree i do agree i, I see it a lot and uh that's the goal is ju just to try to help people and at least you know share what i did wrong so you know other people don't fall into that same uh, category and mistakes does yeah, someone you have right. their notifications on because it's beeping? It might be me. I don't even know. Oh, how to <laughs> I just didn't want to interrupt uh, someone right in the middle of, of telling something important. Is that me? I'm making this. So. Hold on. You're popular. You're really popular that. today. <laughs> I don't even turn that off. I'm not good. I'm not good with tech. That that's that's, oh, my, no. one, that's my one downside. Oh no! Okay. It, may, it may be off now. Okay. I think I may have done it. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, we, I was telling Aria the really cool thing about you is that you trade both pennies and options, which I find to be just a really cool combination. How did you start getting into trading, and and which one did you do first? Uh, yeah, so uh, I first started trading around six to seven years ago. Um, 
So just about when I was 16, I had to be under um, my father's account. So was, I think it's called uh, a custodian and then I just had to be an individual under it, if mm-hmm. I'm correct. Um, I don't really remember if that's the exact term used um, for me to be able to trade, I think, because you have to be 18, if I'm also correct on that. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so I started then, everything was penny stocks back then. Um, I didn't really go into options until around three years ago, maybe three to four years ago, actually, I should say, when I was 19. Um, and honestly, I, you know, it's, it's funny. Uh, that's something a lot of people ask. And the first thing that I have to say is I don't even remember why I started to get into trading. Um, it just kind of happened. I guess one day I, I must've saw something somewhere maybe. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I just just decided to dive in. I mean, I was always interested in the markets, but I never, you know, really knew anything. Um, and I was always interested in the stock market and the real estate market. So it, it, you know, it all played into effect and just trying to do something and learn something to grow into, my entrepreneurial style of life, I guess you could say. Um, but you yeah. You said you're I'm, only 22? Uh, correct. Wow. That's amazing that you already have come this far and you're so young. <laughs> Thank you. That's Wish great. I would have done this at 22. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Thank throughout you. the years uh, you've learned a lot of big lessons. Definitely. hundred <laughs> percent. Uh, from losing money six out where you'd like to share with our traders oh 100 percent uh yeah from losing money and making money there's mistakes and knowledge to be had and learned in both of those aspects um when i first started trading i started with just about two thousand dollars um and within a few months it turned into around just about eight eight hundred so i lost about twelve hundred um and then i i couldn't even tell you what happened i was so new to trading um you know i guess it must have been one of those euphoria times in the markets and my 800 dollars turned into just about fifty thousand dollars within like three months of trading so my, my life was changing right then and there and i was just under 18 so you know as an 18 year old with that amount of money i was i didn't know what to do um and of course, that's where the mistakes came. Um, you know, I turned that fifty thousand dollars right back into ten thousand dollars and lost, you know, like eighty percent of it right there. Um, and I did this a few times uh, until I really started to gather all the lessons and knowledge that I had from these mistakes and, you know, the training that I was doing. Um, and most of it was associated with basically you know, revenge trading, uh, which is something I see a lot of people do. Um, and like I said, I've been a culprit of, uh, as well. And, uh, you know, going too big in positions to try to make money back that you lost. And, you know, that really could hurt you too. And that's where, you know, being consistent with your portfolio and, or your trading in general, um, definitely helps you limit that big drawdown because let's just say I could lose you know a good example at the beginning of this week um, I started this week down 5,000 you know Monday wasn't really that good and by Tuesday um, I started Tuesday morning still down you know five to six thousand and just in that day alone by 11 o'clock I was up for the week around 12,000 and that was with the same consistent position sizes uh and, you know, selling, you know, my losers and looking for new plays. And I totally changed my whole week in one day. And it, it could happen, you know, it's not about, you know, everyone comes into uh, trading and expects to turn a thousand into a million in just a few days. And that's not how it works. And that's how I, you know, how I thought too. Um, I would go all in and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, that's really how I did turn the 800 into 50,000. I didn't know better. So that's how um, you lost it again. <laughs> yeah, that, that is how I lost it again. Exactly. Um, but yeah, you know, it's not about that. It's about 
what I like to say now is it's truly the markets are is about preservation because if you're not preserving in the markets, you're not going to be making money either. Um, and everyone is all about just trying to make money and, you know, turn that thousand into a million when it's all about just taking the slow gains and slowly growing. And since then, I've never had a drawdown in three to four years like that. And, you know, yeah, I'll have 10, 20,000 drawdowns, but I know I'll make it back and I don't even have to worry about it. So even, you know, when the markets fell, for example, last year, um, originally I was down maybe 10,000. Um, and my account's in the six figure range, uh, just to, you know, give an example. Um, but, you know, that part of my trading, I guess you could say, was actually the most, I would say a lot of people lost money in that time. Um, but I know a lot of people who really made money in that time, if they really knew how to, you know, I guess, gather the information and or uh, use it to their advantage. Uh, you know, I made the most amount of money that I ever had in trading in those times. And I saw a lot of people doing the same. And it was kind of, it's hard to explain, but there was definitely good times and bad times in that trading. But the volatility definitely added a lot of uh, good to like opportunities. Yeah, I guess you could say opportunities. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. you know, it didn't, it added good and it added bad, but yeah, the opportunities were definitely there for the good side of it. Right. Um, yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, and uh, I'm glad you brought up revenge trading because that's another unfortunate behaviors we see among mm -hmm. uh, traders. Uh, I personally uh, was able to stop doing that after. Yeah years uh, by uh, just not revisit, not visiting my loser ticker again that day. And mm -hmm. um, if, and then also if I was really convicted on adding to my position, I would only uh, add one time. And, you know, following that rule was very good because I would have to wait and wait since I knew I only have one chance to add. Yeah. So that really paid out. I have no problems anymore uh, in that area of um, over trading, revenge trading. Mm -hmm. And that's a great milestone because it takes a long time to stop doing that. Definitely does. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, <laughs> uh, you know, you're one of my uh, favorite uh, traders on Twitter because mm -hmm. you cover uh, trading psychology and you have a passion for helping traders. Uh, traders in this risky environment mm -hmm. and uh you know i just saw on your twitter uh you had mentioned i love trading and helping people yeah this isn't a job for me uh it's my life and i live it so mm -hmm. uh we need people like you more and we need to give you light because uh this is so important in a place where there are scammers and there are um people who aren't quite there to help but to show off uh, their Ferraris but it's sure, very sure. obvious that you, you genuinely want to help uh, traders learn and thank you for that mm -hmm. yeah, yeah no I and to go back on what you were just saying too I, I've seen a lot uh, recently of uh, not just Twitter um, a lot of places discord Twitter you know anything there's a lot of fake accounts now trying to you know basically uh, copycat other people and trying to ask people for money and stuff and saying like, you know, you could follow me and stuff like that. Um, I've had people do that to my account. I've seen a lot of, you know, higher, uh, I guess you could say follower people, you know, have the same thing. So it, it's, it is, you know, kind of sad that that's going on. Yeah, there's um, copycats yeah. everywhere on copying everything. It's, yeah, yeah it's it, relentless. It's really sad. Um, and yeah, thank you for that, uh, Ari. I appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, no, that, that's one thing I wanted to hit on too, because I, I've seen that too. Um, and, you know, in general, yeah, people only post their profits and they don't post, post their losses. And that, you know, kind of creates a rift on, you know, showing that you only make profits, which, you know, obviously isn't true. Um, and if they do only make profits, you're really good for them. I want to I learn too. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, it is good to show both sides and to try to help everyone as much as you can. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to be you have to be transparent. I think that if you're going to want to help people, you need to be transparent and you need to be um, yourself. You know, it's like you said, like the the, the copycats, um, we actually just experienced a similar issue with it. And it's just, it just seems like people see you doing well, they mm. just want to copy it rather than going out and getting their own original strategy, original yeah. thoughts. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's dangerous. I mean, would you say that that's kind of like one of the hardest things you have to deal with right now with your trading? Or is there any like, still ongoing challenges that you have uh no I mean I I kind of I I spread it out there um and I try to remind people every once in a while that it is out there um but you know since I kind of did that I guess they kind of backed off a little bit um I know people who actually did get scammed thinking it was me and I you know I've I've uh sent that out there I've actually put in reports and so as the people who got scammed um I think to the FBI and I can't remember uh, something else. We had to do it to the local police um, in the area they were at and uh, something internet police, something like that. It's like some form of internet. Uh, if there is an internet police, there needs to be. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a really no, yeah. good idea. I don't know. No, no, it, it, it is a site. It's something with the government and we did it there too. Um, but the sad thing is they said they, they won't even do anything. They can't do anything unless there's like more, yeah, unless there's more accounts of it. That's terrible. Yeah, no, it, it was pretty sad. Um, so I tried to help out and as much as I could, but it, yeah, it, it's really sad. Cause I mean, for example, for Discord, they could have my same exact picture, same exact name. The only thing that is different is uh, there is like three or four numbers at the end of my mm-hmm. name. Uh, which, you know, is the Discord ID numbers or whatever, the account numbers. And that's the only thing that you could tell the difference. But, you know, no one, you know, cares to look at that. And, you know, who would even know to look at that? Um, Because that's where they were really doing it uh, on my end, at least. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was getting people would text me saying, like, is this you? Is this you? And yeah, it wouldn't it wouldn't be me because I'm I'm not going around asking people for money or anything. Right. Uh, in, yeah, it, it's it's really pretty sad that you know it's going on, um, and like I said, it's going on on Twitter and other things too. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, and um, you and I are in a, a Discord together in Correct. Sapphire, mm-hmm. and a lot of people look up to you. So I mean, trading is is dangerous enough as is for mm-hmm. you to have to worry about people. Um, pretending to be you and scamming the people who are getting help from you that's that's a lot to that's a lot to deal with and applause uh, applause to you for being able to to navigate it without um you know having a few screws go loose because yeah. <laughs> that that would be a lot to deal with <laughs> absolutely yeah. but i'm sure throughout the years uh, having to have the right psychology and mentality you have a better grasp than you would if things like that had happened in the beginning. Uh, you, you grow as a person when you become successful trader, consistent, because mm-hmm. you really have to you know, dig in and deal with a lot of uh, emotions. And if I may, I'd like to jump into options. That is my favorite. <laughs> yeah, I'm sub- so excited. <laughs> this is our first guest that we've really had a chance to go in depth with options about. So, and I told Perfect. Aria, I'm getting my notebook. I'm going to be taking notes because I'm, <laughs> I'm newer to options. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have good examples today. Uh, I was telling uh, Erica about Tesla and TTD, the trade desk mm-hmm. uh, on why, well, I didn't tell her why I entered and everything, but I, I told her I had good plays on those. So I could definitely go over that today as it's, you know, fresh in my mind and the charts right up. Yeah, please do so. Mm-hmm. Uh, so whenever you guys are ready, hit me up with anything and I'm ready to go. Let's go. You're, you're good. Tell us about your trades today and, um, why you entered them. And, and, and if you can just tell us a little bit more about like what it is you look for when you're going into an options trade. Okay. Uh, so perfect. Uh, today, uh, for, I'll just go over Tesla and then I'll go over the trade desk. Uh, my trigger was to enter above like 670, 671. Uh, That's the level where it's been stuck at over the past couple of days. Um, It has been above it uh, over the past couple of days. 
Um, if you see my head moving left to right, it's because I'm looking at the chart, sorry. You're fine. Um, and just to clarify for um, our users, you entered um, calls or puts? Uh, yes, I'll give you the exact one right now. Just give me okay. one moment. Uh, it was Tesla six, uh, Tesla May 7th. So today's expiration, uh, um, 680 and 682.5 calls. So two different strikes, um, both looking for upside. And uh, that's what I entered for the options. I entered on the break of 671 um, and it dipped right below again to 660, like seven, 668. Um, I was still in my play. Um, and I expected, you know, a pullback to the 670. Um, and I just let it wait. It was, you know, the first 20, 30 minutes of the market. What I usually like to do is I usually like to wait. I'm Eastern time. So I usually like to wait, uh, 940, 945 to actually really enter something. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's fine with me if I miss that first 10 minutes of the move. Um, I like to see if there's a dip or something. And, uh, I got in just on the beginning of the dip. It hit like 672. And I got in just about like 670, like 80, 671. Um, my stop was just around that morning open spot. So 665. I, I usually give it an extra dollar from, you know, where it is, especially Tesla, one that moves so quick and so volatile. And I do all my stops mentally. Um, mm -hmm. And they're all based on supports and or resistances. Um, for profit targets and stops. Um, and uh, the goal was to hit around the 680 to 683 range, which is where my you know strikes were. Um, and we actually did hit just about what I see here is 683.70. Um, it could have went a couple of cents more down. You know, I don't know if I'm hitting the exact top of that wick, um, what I'm looking at right now. So the price target hit basically almost perfectly, give or take a dollar. Um, and you know, the calls definitely paid out and they both went into the money. Mm -hmm. Um, and they turned into around, you know, 250 to 300% as they increased in value over that $5 move and also getting into the money. Um, and as we're actually talking about it right now, it is coming down to that 670 area again. Mm -hmm. So it could be a watch for a possible play now, but are you going to trade and podcast at the same time? Uh, if, <laughs> because if I, I think to, it's kind of cool. <laughs> no yeah. day traders, they could. I know. Yeah, yeah, you got, I might have to. to my stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean that that trade worked out really well, and uh, you know it, it it definitely paid it out uh, in a good way for a Friday. So I'm happy about that. I'd like to highlight uh, what you said about uh, entering at a higher level than the dip. So the dip was 666, but you waited till it's 676. And a lot of uh, traders, they think, okay, let me catch the bottom. Let me catch the bottom. That does not pan out. You want to go in to strength. And that is one of the habits of successful <laughs> traders. Mm -hmm. So sure, we want a better price, but it's even more important to go in a right time. Otherwise, uh, you can definitely, you know, just be stuck in a horrible downtrend. You don't have and, to uh, catch the dip. You have to be in the well, right, that does, right that goes into risk reward, right? I mean, and, and options are risky, especially you were, you were uh, trading day of expiration calls, mm -hmm. which of course is riskier. So Correct. how do you, um, I know you, you, you touched on stop loss a little bit. Um, do you look for specific strikes? Like, do you, you know, try to limit yourself to a certain amount out of the money, mm -hmm. uh, for what you're trading. hundred uh, percent. so I've been day trading these options and just scalping them a lot more recently than more so swinging. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do like to play near the money and for Tesla, you know, $10 is definitely near the money. You know, Tesla can make a 30, $40 move in a day. And we've seen that happen before. Um, and uh, by the way, Tesla just went up three dollars. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. Uh, you know, even when I go with time, uh, if I want to swing something, I usually like to go two to three months out for safety. It depends on the, what stock it is uh, too, for me to really gather which strikes to really hit. Um, 
it varies based on the on the stock. Of course, everyone, every every stock behaves differently, and and it's nice when you do have stocks that you know their movement and you can trade options on. I have to ask you though, there are some optionable penny stocks. Do you trade options on the pennies too? Uh, no, I do not. That is one thing I don't do <laughs> uh, because the moves aren't that big enough. Uh, mm -hmm. And I see a lot of people do this a lot and they just get trapped and they basically, you know, end up worthless. Of course, you could have those outliers that definitely do, you know, pay out big. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I don't like to focus on anything, honestly, under like 20, 30, 40 dollars uh, for options, that is. Mm -hmm. for options that is i truly like you know things in the 80 to 80 plus range for options because the stock is more stable usually right yeah that and you know there's at least a movement so you could actually make profit on the trade itself too um i i like something that actually moves so i could see movement on the options itself too mm -hmm. And in contrast, um, since we already started touching on uh, penny stocks a little bit, mm -hmm. um, we would like to pick your brain about those too. Yep. Um, I know Aria, you wanted to ask him uh, some questions about it. So I'll go ahead and let you start. Yeah, we're, we're interested to see what kind of uh, trading strategy do you use for penny stocks? Is it the same as you do for options as far as um, technicals, momentum, mm -hmm. um, and what is your favorite strategy if you have a favorite one? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it kind of uh, relays the same message to uh, the penny stocks, from options to penny stocks. I, I look for strength, I look for movers, and I try to follow the strength there. We could go over IHT. I've made money on this one many times before, and I know its patterns. I know it's going to end up if, you know, of course, anything could change in this market, but knowing this stock, it's probably going to end closing down half of its gains for the day and stuff like that. So I'm looking for a close around 350, which would make my short around a hundred, uh, a dollar 20, a dollar 30 per share, mm -hmm. which is good profit for a short. And um, could but, you explain why you think it's going to lose like half of its gains? Cause a lot of people don't understand well, what happened to the momentum. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, today is Friday. So it actually, it actually makes my thesis a little bit better. You know, people don't like to hold things into, uh, you know, swinging things into Fridays usually, um, especially penny stocks, the ones that are up, you know, 100, 200%. Um, and if you look at the past in, you can just look over the year uh, on the daily chart, you'll see a lot of top wicks on this chart. Um, and you'll see that it does give up gains half 25 at least 30 percent of gains uh from the top so you know that's one reason why i decided to short this um so yeah i i, I guess i'm <laughs> a man of all tricks uh shorting logging options pennies whatever uh one thing i don't do is futures mm -hmm. uh, but uh yeah i mean if we wanted to give a good example here on you know, a trade that I actually was looking at. I think I think your phone's going off again. I'm oh, sorry, again? I can't I can't hear you. <laughs> oh yeah. I hmm. think it's I think it's your phone. It sounds like an iPhone. I don't know. No, I'm no, no, it is. I don't know Android. how it's going through now. Okay. Uh, hold, okay. <laughs> right. if I turn it off again. Uh, but uh, if we were to go into uh, a trade on, we'll give an example IHT. Um, there is a day, I mean, a part of the day where it actually bottomed and made a, a support. And that's right around the 390 to $4 range. And you'll see it break above. At this point, you could, I guess you could say it's a resistance mm -hmm. at 945 to 10 a.m. You'll see it kind of hold that area and or break above that area. And it dips down to that area. And then going back to around 1020 to 1025, you'll see it hit that area again. Oh, okay, hold on. That's annoying me now. <laughs> uh, I apologize for that. I really did. That's all right. I just, um, I didn't want to, because I couldn't hear it. Like it was interrupting you talking. So I just didn't, mm -hmm. I, I wanted to make sure you got your answer all the way through. Um, the 1020 to 1025 area, you'll see it hit that area again and then instantly straight go up to the past resistance now at around $5. So uh, 
what I like to do for penny stocks is literally the same thing. I just want to see momentum, you know, a quick dip and coming back to support areas or past uh, resistances, making sure it holds that area and uh, basically see if it starts to flatten out and or volume die out at that selling point. Uh, to enter that trade for a long and or short, depending on which way I want to, you know, go into it. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of new beginner traders, they start with penny stocks. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure you get a lot of uh, beginner questions all the time. Is there um, any kind of advice that you try to give to everyone? Um, something that you kind of wish more beginner traders knew? Uh, can you, can you ask that one more time? I just want to make sure I understand. I actually will clarify that. Yeah. Uh, what questions do you get asked the most by the new traders mm -hmm. and then what advice do you give? Okay. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people ask, you know, what do I look for? Um, and here's all I have in my chart, by the way, I have volume. I have 14 SMA, the 30 SMA, uh, Fibonacci's, uh, which could either be drawn out or could be added as a script on Thinkorswim and or TrendSpider. Uh, and which where would you favorite. find those scripts if you wanted to add them to? Yep. Uh, uh, I'll actually, I'll send them to you guys and I'll, I'll definitely, you guys could send it out. Oh, that um, would be amazing. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely do that. Um, and, uh, you know, that's basically it. It's so I trade off the 14 and 30 SMA and the fibs in the volume. Um, other than that, everything is chart patterns. You know, for example, uh, I don't know how to <laughs> you turn can this see thing it off. in his face that time. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to turn this thing off. I, listen, I, <laughs> I apologize. I really do. I, we were just talking like um, yeah. you told us about your your indicators. I use mm -hmm. the, the scripts and that's amazing that you're going to send that to us. Um, yeah. We'll be happy so, to, to share that. Yeah. So, you know, that's what people ask me is how I find things. And what I was getting to is, you know, other than the indicators, um, it's really just uh, candlesticks and chart patterns. And truly this, you know, took me time. Uh, like I said, I'm six to seven years into trading, um, you know, watching day in and day out, you know, is how I learn to see these patterns uh, throughout the day or these candlestick formations. Um, and, you know, what I'm talking about, you know, for example, is cup and handles, you know, bull flags, pennants, stuff like that. Um, just to give examples so people understand what I'm going at if they didn't. Um, and you know, for candles, you know, hammers and stuff like that, dojis. Um, and those are just examples, like I said, again. Uh, but, you know, this is, it, it's, all my trading is technical like that. It's very simple to me. Uh, like I said, it does take time to learn. Um, you're not going to learn it, you know, from one day to the next. You're, it's going to take time. You're going to have to really dive into it and really focus on you know, for example, if you lose on one trade, go back, see, see if you could find out one reason why that trade fell or why that trade went up, you know, whichever way you were obviously going and see why it did the opposite. Um, and, you know, it definitely will help you start to gather information and see things that you will start to see in everyday trading and everyday charting. Um, and, you know, 90% of the traders that I talk to, you know, use technicals and it's definitely, you know, a great way to trade. Um, and I definitely think it is, you know, transformed me into the trader I am today. Um, and, you know, putting those together with volume shares traded, all that stuff and momentum and just seeing if there's strength or weakness involved in the trade before you get into it is really what um, can make that trade good or bad. So yeah, like I said, you know, after this, you know, when we're done with the questions, I'll go over one more quick trade, uh, the trade desk trade as well. Yeah, go um, ahead. Cause um, that was actually the end of our questions. So okay. if you wanna go ahead and show us that, yeah. Yeah, cause going back to what Aria said, uh, 
you know, getting in on strength. This one is actually a really good example of that uh, because this trade opened the day at 628 and I did not enter this trade until it hit 653. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it, I definitely waited a while for this trade. Um, I wasn't expecting, you know, a big, big, big move, but I was expecting a, you know, a move to at least make me money on the trade. Um, would you like me to share my screen or no? Yeah, go ahead. Actually, that would be, that would be amazing. Uh, it says, oh, you just have to allow it. I am right now. All right, you should be able to now. Okay, let's see. And do you guys see the chart here? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so I actually, I took off all the indicators right now, just so it's, it's just clear and you could see the chart mm -hmm. um, because truly, you know, this one was up so much in the morning that, you know, the 1430 SMA, 8 SMA, whatever, whatever it is, you know, really didn't matter at that point. Um, it was more so looking back on past resistances and supports and what made this the, a reason why I entered the trade. And here were some trend lines I had from uh, the past couple of days and even, you know, some trend lines from the daily chart. Um, and this line right here was what I was looking for. So breaking above this 653 area was my entry point and trying to see if it was, you know, going to be uh, showing strength through that area, which it mm -hmm. did. Um, my stop loss would be breaking under 652, uh, which it did not do after that. And the trade was uh, 660 calls for today's expiration. Um, I also bought five contracts of those. And that was at around $5.10. Um, I sold the trade at around $6.80. So... And do you scale out or do you um, sell them all at once? Yeah, I do scale out uh, for the Tesla trade. I actually, you know, to go back on that one too, I did scale out some at like 676 uh, when I was up and mm -hmm. then I scale out the rest at around 679. Um, so yeah, I, you know, it also depends on how many contracts I have. Usually if I have like eight plus contracts, I like to scale. If it's like four to five, I kind of just, you know, take the profits and usually those are quick scalps just to, you know, get out and get in. Um, but yeah, my goal was to hit 663 to 664 and it went actually a little bit above that hitting around 657. I mean, 667, sorry about that. And, you know, once it clearly got above this 653, as you can see this trend line here, it, you know, continued higher. It did try to dip below. It didn't get below that 652 though. And it went in the money, hit 66, uh, hit 667. And I sold at around just about 662 where my price target was. Um, and that trade uh, was around 25, 30%. And it went a little bit higher going into 100%. But I sold a little early. I like that. You have your support and resistance. And mm -hmm. you entered at support. And you exited somewhere along the resistance. And that's pre-market, right? The high and low. Uh, Sorry. So from the here last, on, no, no, it's yesterday's. Yeah, um, that's great. And, and that goes to say, you know, the trading part is a very small part of it all. You, you know, it's, it's preparation that should be 90% of what takes up your trading time. Mm -hmm. And look, you have the day off, probably you're doing a podcast, you know, you're, you got a successful trade in and, um, Another good point here is that, you know, nothing is ever too high or too low. So mm -hmm. you, you, when you know your technicals and your strategies, you pull the trigger when something is high and it looks good, uh, it shows strength and, and then you have a profit target. And if it's something low, I used to dip by, but uh, you just, um, only you have to do, you have to have a strategy. That's it. The stop loss, have a stop loss. That's so important. And I think it's important to say that um, this was an options trade and he didn't nail the exact top, which by the way, guys, you're never going to consistently nail the exact top. 
Correct. But it's so important that he remained disciplined, especially trading exp day of expiration because time is working against you with these options. So I think it's important to let people know that too. Like once you're, once your price target hits, you have to keep that discipline because otherwise you're just eating into your profits. A hundred percent. And even, even if you try to nail the exact top, that just shows that you're not waiting for confirmation. That's an important topic we haven't covered yet. But we'll don't have to do that on, on, a, on another episode. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Wait for confirmation. It really pays off, uh, I think, uh, in my uh, trading career i i think it pays off a lot more yeah 100 percent. and you know uh like i said i i kind of changed my strategy a little bit over the past few months you know because of the market's changing uh i like to really do the two to three month swings um you know it, it was really working out um until it didn't um so i changed up real quick um that's another thing you got to learn you know change when things are changing truly uh and uh, honestly, I never really liked doing weekly contracts. And I could say for the past two to three months, that's all I've really been doing um, and just following these momentum and gappers. Uh, a, you know, a great pattern to do is, uh, you know, gap and goes. Uh, so things like earnings that are up, you know, 2% or 3%, 4%, whatever it is, you know, if they show strength in the morning, if they hold support, and, you know, if they start to reach higher, you know, chart it out before the market opens, see where it's at, uh, see past supports and resistances and, you know, see where this could possibly lead to. Um, and that could be a great play. And, uh, you know, one that I did that really stood out uh, a few weeks ago was ISRG. Uh, it, it gapped on earnings and then it went maybe 30 to $40 more that day. And, you know, that that move could, you know, really turn into thousands, thousand percent uh, on the contract. So it, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that, there's a lot of strategies that people could use. It all depends what you make your strategies, you know, how you become the trader you, you know, turn into. Absolutely. And that's an amazing uh, statement to leave us <laughs> with. Actually, I think that's such a perfect ending. It's all about you and what strategy works for you we're all finding ourselves here right that's very true thank very you true. so much for coming on and speaking with us you were so awesome about it too because i know we, we were just talking you're like yeah i'm ready to go tomorrow yeah. i was like really <laughs> let's do it <laughs> no, I, like, so, I like to get things done i like to right? <laughs> yeah Awesome. Well, thank you yes, for thank keep you. helping, uh, you know, traders. And I saw on your Twitter saying that you're going to start posting more charts, not just giving mm -hmm. alerts and for the reason yeah. of uh, educating them. And thank you for that. And keep doing that. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I will. And like I said, I apologize for the mishap during this, but uh, I appreciate you guys for bearing oh. with me. We're so we were so happy to have you on, and we will uh, talk again soon. And we will post that um, those scripts on on Twitter, okay, Discord, yes. everywhere, so everyone can use. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys, and um, go get your Tesla trade. <laughs> uh, sounds good. I right, have a good one. You too. Bye. -bye. Bye. All right. All right. Are we gonna try to trade some more today? Because now I kind of want to. <laughs> I'm itch. trying to see where Spy is right now. I know. Okay. All right. Let's get the let, let's get off of here. We have some trading to do. We're traders. We've got the bug. Oh. I love you. That was an awesome interview. And I um you too. That see was you great. again. We have another one. We have a big guest coming up next. Oh we'll yeah. See. We have to tease it. I think I know, but yeah. I'm not Oh yeah, like it's it's literally the interview no one else can get, but the Trader Babes got it done and it, it it's going to be info you cannot get anywhere else and oh yeah. Buckle up, baby. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Want more Trader Babes? Subscribe now and connect with us on social media for exclusive content and access you won't find anywhere else. And we'll see you right here 
on the next unforgettable episode of Trader Babes.